Hello. Today I wanted to do a bit of a different video. Um, usually my videos show me making stuff and today I wanted to show um, some of my measuring tools, specifically one type of measuring tool and the three different sizes I have of that measuring tool. The tool in question is an inside micrometer. Um, this was the first one I bought. I bought this about 16 years ago. It's a 2 inch to 12 inch inside mic. It's a Mitotoyo. And in um, the first probably 13 years that I owned it, I used it twice. Uh, the reason for that was during that time I did mostly smaller work and I rarely ever bored anything bigger than 6 inches. And I have a set of snap gauges that go up to 6 inches and I much prefer using those over an inside mic. I find them uh, much easier to use. So for the most of this tool's life it sat on a shelf and collected dust. And then about three years ago I got my large lathe and I got a job where I had to bore out uh, it was a pressure test fixture and I needed to bore it out to just over 12 inches and of course my micrometer which I'd only used twice wasn't big enough to measure the inside of this test fixture so I needed to get a bigger micrometer inside mic. Um, I didn't want to buy another new one because I realized it was going to get used very little and I didn't want to tie up that much money in a tool I was barely going to use. So I went on eBay and had a look and I had some time. I had a number of weeks before I had to do the job and so I went on eBay and I gave myself a bit of a crash course on inside mics, the different styles, tubular and rod type and the different brands and um, there was there were some 24 inch ones and I was thinking about that because that was twice as much as I needed for this job and then I found uh, this set and it's uh, another Mitotoyo set and it goes up to 36 inches and that was three times what I needed for the job at hand but I thought it wasn't a lot more money than the uh, the 24 inch ones it was in good shape and chances are I would never need to use the full range of this micrometer. My lathe will swing 24 inches. Um, you know, I'd never bore a hole bigger than that. So I, I uh, figured that this inside mic would last me the rest of my life. So I bought it and it took a week or so to come in and I used it and I put it away. And lo and behold, about three weeks later, my brother phoned and he has a construction company and they own a few tunnel boring machines for doing sewer and water work and they wanted me to look at one of their worn out boring machines and see if it could be rebuilt or what, what it would cost to rebuild so they could decide whether they want to do it or not. Inside this machine are a couple of hardened rings and the drum that does the cutting rotates on these rings and it uses two sets of rollers and each set of roller uh, rotates on these hardened rings. I needed to take accurate measurements of the inside diameter of the rings to see if they were worn evenly or not because if they were worn evenly I could just build bigger rollers. The rollers were shot and needed to be re rebuilt anyways and I could make up the wear in the rings by installing larger rollers but if the rings were out of round then we were going to have to cut the rings out and redo them and that was going to be very expensive. So I went up, looked at the machine, pulled up the tape measure, measured the ring and it was 54 inches in diameter. So again, I used my 36 inch micrometer one time and then it wasn't big enough for the next job I got. So again, I had some time and I went back to eBay and looked and there were some 60 inch ones and even up to 80 inches and I thought about the 60 it was big enough then I realized my brother's other boring machines are bigger and he may want me to look at them in the future and the 80 inch one would easily cover those so uh, I decided that I would go with an 80 inch one and I narrowed it down again to several that were available and then I just decided okay today I gotta order one and I went on and before I hit order I thought I'd search one more time and there was a new listing 
and this was for a Brown and Sharp set and it was the one I ended up buying and it's this one right here. Now this one has quite a bit more range than I was originally looking for. You can see these stand, uh, extensions here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. They're each two feet long. So you have 14 feet from these extensions. This one is a foot long, it gives you 15. This is six, gives you 15 and a half. By the time you add the micrometer, which is six inches long, the head, you end up being over 16 feet, which is a, a, a huge amount of range for anything I was ever gonna do. But there's even more. There's a second level and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more two foot standards, adding an extra 18 feet to the original 16 or so. Turns out this micrometer will measure between six inches and 415 inches. Um, I figured that there's a very little chance I'll ever bore something out to 34 and a half feet in diameter and this definitely should last me for the rest of my life. And the price was about the same as what the uh, 80 inch ones were going for. So I bought it and uh, I used it one time. Now it's been sitting on the shelf. But I know that no matter what I do, I'll always be able to measure the inside diameter of anything I'll ever see in my life. One thing that's interesting on these, um, this set I think is pretty old. And the guy that was selling it on eBay seemed pretty knowledgeable about brown and sharp tools. And he said that um, he had a lot of brown and sharp catalogs and they never advertised a set nearly this big as a standard set. Uh, so he thinks that this must have been custom ordered from brown and sharp at one time. Obviously by a shop that was doing huge work. Um, but the, the one thing on these that are interesting compared to the more modern ones, at least the Mitotoyo ones, if you look at the Mitotoyo extensions, like this one, I'm not sure if that's going to show up very good or not. That's a two inch extension and they just write two inches on it and that's it. And then in the certificate that comes with this, which never actually came with this one, but came with my first one, they give you a formula and you can enter the length you're calculating and it will tell you the uh, the accuracy of the tool at that length, the worst case accuracy. Not necessarily the accuracy of your tool, but essentially the accuracy um, that, no, how should I word that? The worst you could expect from the tool. On these, Brown and Sharp made these and then they actually m measured them to four decimal places and put that on there. And I'm not sure if that's gonna show up, but that one is stamped 24.0003. So this is actually three tenths over 24 inches. And every single extension, I think I might've called it a standard earlier, but every single extension has the actual length marked on it. So when you string a bunch of these together, you can add up the actual lengths and know the the um, exact length of the micrometer, the stack up you've set up, which is kind of interesting. Although I suspect that when you're measuring something 415 inches in diameter, you're not really concerned about getting it to within a few tenths. In fact, I don't even know how you would measure something that large. If there's anybody out there who's ever used a micrometer this large before or has seen one used, I'd be interested if you could leave a comment or something like that and just tell us how they use them like I'm looking at this thinking you'd need at least eight guys to hold this thing when it's out at its full length you'd need a guy about every four feet to support this um, so I, I have no idea how they would have used something this big but anyways I uh, it's a nice big set and I think I'm finally at the end of having to buy any more inside mics thanks for watching bye